It's another day, yeah. left jab, right jab, this is MMA. MMA Mixed martial arts, quick body parts, undefeated when I pick a mooded champ Who the victim looking in my crystal ball, I predict the winner yeah. Never stop fighting, if you lose, keep your chin up keep your chin Know up. how the game go, I'm a small fella uh -huh. Welcome to the show, this the MMA fortune teller yeah. The MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? UFC Vegas 30. We got Cyril Gain taking on Alexander Volkov. I don't know about you guys, but I think that this main event is absolute dynamite. I'm very excited to see how this fight takes place. Two of the top heavyweight fighters on planet Earth. Stylistically, it's a great matchup. Two guys that, that love the strike and that are very technical and great at what they do so at the end of the day or at the end of this fight card we're, we're really going to have a treat on our hands i think there's some exciting matchups throughout the card as well we'll be getting to those fights here in a minute and uh, comment below are you guys feeling this card or what uh, so we got ufc vegas 30 on the horizon here in the meantime we're going to talk about some recent things going on in the mma world we're going to recap ufc vegas 29 of course that was not the biggest fight card out, but uh, you know we had three plays. I'll tell you how I did over there uh, this past Saturday. And um, of course, you guys know we'll have the timestamps down below right away. So if you guys don't want to listen to the MMA news or you don't want to listen to the recap or you want to just scroll right to a specific fight, you guys know the routine. Go right below and click that and go right to where you want to go. Um, I do want to tell you guys, you know, I, I really like to let you guys know how much I appreciate all the support I've been getting. I've been getting a lot of pleasant comments from you guys, and it means a lot to me. So I just want to take a second to let you guys know that that really does. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. So um, I appreciate all those those kind comments there. Uh, please continue to support the channel. It really helps me out. Please hit that like button on this video right now. If you guys haven't already, subscribe. And uh, if you're not following me on my social media outlets, please do on instagram mma fortune teller underscore and catch me on twitter the mma teller and it's all below you guys see it scrolling so again man i, I really appreciate your guys support uh, warms my heart and uh with no further ado let's get into some recent mma news so of course pfl is still doing their thing uh, how about that disgusting decision uh, of glason tebow defeating rory mcdonald horrible decision uh, I mean, I didn't see anybody agreeing with that decision, quite honestly. Um, I couldn't believe what my, my ears heard. And, uh, you know, right when I went to social media, I didn't see anybody agreeing with that decision. So, I mean, it was quite obviously a bad decision there. Uh, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference for, for Rory. Rory's still going to be moving through uh, the tournament based on, on the point system that PFL has going on. Uh, so we will be seeing him throw down in the near future. Hopefully he can... Uh, you know, maybe look a little bit better out there and move through the rank, move through the, the bracket there and win himself some big money. Um, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, Pedro Munoz expects a win over Aldo to put him in the title conversation. Do you guys agree with that? I mean, Aldo, still a ferocious, talented fighter. Uh, he has that big name. Uh, that would definitely be a good win for Munoz. I know the, the, the bantamweight division is a little scrambled up right now with that whole Piotr Jan and, and Sterling situation. We'll see how that all goes. Um, how about Anderson Silva getting a victory this past weekend uh, over uh, Julio, uh, Julio, what is it? Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. or whatever, the, you know, the son of the, the legendary fighter. Uh, Silva was able to go out to Mexico and pull off the victory there. So that was a big deal. It was a split decision victory. Now Jake Paul wants to put uh, Anderson Silva versus John Jones excuse me, Roy Jones uh, Jr. as an as an undercard, I'm assuming as a, a co-main for, for one of his uh, fight cards, or excuse me, for the, the T-Wood fight that, that will be coming up. Hey, let's be honest, guys. You know, I've been bashing these shows and whatnot, but we're all probably going to be tuning in, especially for that one where, where T-Wood's fighting one of the, the more decorated MMA uh, fighters coming over to that world, you know, to the boxing world to try to put an end to, to Jake Paul's nonsense. We're definitely going to be tuning in 
why not throw the, the Roy Jones versus Anderson Silva fight as the co-main event? I'll watch it. I mean, it is what it is. So, yeah, throw that out there. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys want to see that? I'll watch it. Let's see what else we got going on. Oh, how about uh, Luis Pena charged with robbery, battery, and criminal mischief? It's a little surprising. You know, when, when I saw that, I was a little surprised. You know, this is a guy that uh, I bumped into around around the way, seen him at some bare-knuckle FC events. Uh, you know, I got a buddy that's a UPS driver. He, he just hit me up a couple weeks back, a couple months ago. He saw Pena jogging around, getting his conditioning in. Um, so he saw him out here. You know, he's, he's down here around the way by me. But this is a guy that always tries to come off like he's such a good dude. He comes out with that, that multi-universe flag, and he's all about world peace, and he's always preaching all this good stuff, but... Uh, you know, I don't know the exact details on what's going on here, uh, but as you see, yeah, the Coral Springs Police Department uh, arrested him. And, you know, if anyone knows anything about the Coral Springs Police Department, uh, the MMA fortune teller knows all about them. I grew up in Coral Springs and I've dealt with them quite a bit growing up as a kid, uh, me and my group of friends. So, uh, yeah, to, to say the least, quite a bit, you know, take it for what it is. I'm a grown man now and, and I've learned from my mistakes, but Luis Pena at the age that he's at, is still making these types of mistakes. So that, that's really a shame, in my opinion. That's a shame. And we'll, we'll see how the UFC uh, deals with him moving forward. But he was a guy, at one point in time, you know, he had a lot of talent. Um, he had a lot of momentum coming off the Ultimate Fighter. He was the guy that a lot of people thought should have won if he didn't get injured. Really, really hasn't lived up to his potential, in my opinion. But we'll, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, what else we got going on? Oh, how about Jason Knight? Yeah, I'll touch upon that real quick. Jason Knight submits Charles Felony Bennett. I think we all saw that coming. You know, you know uh, that was taking place over there with uh, Jorge Masvidal's new promotion that he has going on. It's kind of under the Bare Knuckle FC banner. You could watch it on their app and whatnot. But uh, I think we all knew how, that, how we all knew how that fight was going to go. Charles Bennett just going out there collecting money somehow. Time and time again, hasn't got a victory in, in decades, but everyone, everybody wants to tune in to see him fight. So uh, good for him. I guess he's still making some money. Um, Aljamain Sterling to Piotr Jan, you're a piece of sh shit human being. Um, I, I cannot wait to see that fight take place. Let that fight happen again. Piotr Jan was dominating that fight, made that mistake. I think Aljo is really going to be eating his words when he gets locked in that cage with him again. And, uh, you know, speaking of that, I know Sean, o Sean O'Malley says his dream fight is to fight Piotr Jan in Russia. I don't think that that's something that he really wants. Now, don't get me wrong. Sean O'Malley is an extremely talented fighter. He could pull off of the flashiest of knockouts against anybody uh, on the right night. But Piotr Jan, in my opinion, will destroy O'Malley. He will use the grappling, the wrestling. He is basically made of steel, especially compared to a guy in O'Malley that is, that is made out of uh, I don't even know, made out of some type of, I don't even know, w whatever you want to say. The guy's fragile, man. The guy's fragile. We've seen him broke. Uh, we've seen him break out there multiple times, right? His legs break. Piotr Jan would be throwing nasty leg kicks on him. He'd be checking his kicks. Um, I, I feel like Piotr Jan would be like the Wolverine fighting some type of, uh, of tin man out there. So I don't know. I don't think that's really what he wants, but you know, I'm just preaching on that real quick. Uh, but again, Sean O'Malley is still a very talented fighter, and if he hits anybody with the right shot, he could put them out. But I, I just think statistically and, and percentage-wise, he's going to lose that fight. So he needs to sharpen some things up. He's still young. Um, Tyson Fury shuts the door on MMA transition. Uh, so from what I heard about this, it's not he won't be fighting MMA, but he is still open to potentially fighting you know, in a cage and basically an MMA type of striking bout. You know, wearing the smaller gloves and possibly with kicks, but maybe not even with kicks. Just just a boxing match in a cage with the small gloves. Maybe you could throw some clinches, clinch in there, you know, clinch work. Maybe throw some elbows. I saw an interview with him and he was talking a little bit about that. So maybe that's something that we see. I would love to see him make that transition. Uh, first and foremost, he has to take out Deontay Wilder for the third time. The third time. You heard that correct. Is he definitely beat him the first time. Destroyed him the second time. And uh, that will be three times in a row. So uh, stay tuned to see what goes on with that. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to wrap up this last week's you know MMA news recap. And uh, let, now let, let's see uh, how this event went for the teller here this past weekend. We did have three official plays on, that, on this fight card.
So UFC Fight Night Vegas 29. We had the Korean Zombie taking on Dan Ige. Everybody was on Ige, right? Everybody was giving me a hard time for picking the Korean Zombie here. Um, you know, people people sleep on the Korean Zombie skills. Super technical fighter. Very, very polished fighter, man. And um, obviously, he got the victory. We'll get to that in a second. I had three plays. We'll get to them here in a second. Casey O'Neill takes out Lara Procopio. I was on Casey O'Neill here as my pick, as you guys know. She was a slight dog. I feel that she is just a, an extremely tough girl. She has that X factor in there. She needs to work on her striking and her and her technical abilities, but she's tough. She'll keep coming. Her cardio is good. And that's kind of why I was feeling her as the pick there. Uh, Rick Glenn takes out Joaquin Silva. This was uh, the first play that I had. I had uh, Silva here to win the fight. Had a small play on him, and I did lose that. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to see this fight take place at all. Glenn went out there and and Silva just walked straight into a, I think it was a right, walked straight into a right and got put out. I think the stoppage was okay. You know, it wasn't a horrible stoppage, but uh, I don't think Silva was going to recover from that. A little early, if anything, some people thought, but Silva was done. And it's a shame because Silva is a guy that's that's very, very skilled. He's very quick on the feet. He's a nasty striker. He has some jujitsu skills. I thought he could have styled on Rick Glenn if that fight would have been able to take place a little longer. But Rick Rick Glenn went out there and you know he he capitalized on an opportunity of Silva leaving his chin right in front of him, walking forward. Uh, Josh Parisian takes out Rock Martinez. I was on Parisian there just because of the size. You guys know how I felt about that size, and it, and it did come into effect in the third round. Just leaning on Martinez, he was able to kind of take that that third round and showed some flashes of some striking there. Uh, Chaos Williams takes out Matt Semmelsberger. I did have Semmelsberger to win that fight. No official play or anything like that, but it was a, it was an exciting fight. Uh, one of the better fights in the fight card. Uh, Chaos looked good in there. Shout out to Chaos. Uh, Verna Jendi Roba takes out Kanako Murata. Uh, so you know now uh, Kanako Kanako needs to uh, needs to show up. You know this was a girl that had a lot of hype coming into the UFC. She needs to she needs to make a you know, make an impact in the UFC. Put put her name out there. She needs to do bounce back from a, a loss over Verna. But Verna is a very tough customer. Uh, Nick Nega Marino takes out Alexa Kamer and a spy, via split decision. You know, Alexa Kamer was a guy that a lot of people were high on, and now he's losing two in a row. Lost two in a row. He needs to get things going. Uh, here we go. This was one of my favorite fights in the fight card. Matt Brown. You guys know I picked Matt Brown to win this fight. He was a dog. He was right around a plus one fifty. And a lot of people were giving me slack about this pick too, man. It wasn't necessarily just because I'm a big fan of Matt Brown's. Matt Brown is a very talented fighter. He's a dog. He can wrestle. He could strike. He's as tough as it comes. Diego Lima is a guy that, you know, he has some skills. He could throw the leg kick and whatnot. But he's a guy that's really lived off his brother's name, in my opinion. And Matt Brown went out there and and finished him in a nasty way. Got the nasty knockout. Hit him flush right on the side of the face. Right on the side of the chin, I believe it was. And just put him out. Uh, Bruno Silva, I was on Bruno here as well, Took, takes out Wellington Terman. Terman is a guy that just hasn't been looking that good as as of recently, and I, and I, I just wasn't feeling him there. Sangwoo Choi, uh, he he loses, he, excuse me, he defeats Julian Erosa. This was another fight that finished very, very early. Uh, I was on Erosa here. Uh, I, I thought that Erosa was going to win this fight, and unfortunately, we didn't get to see this fight take place. I thought there was some value on Erosa. I thought that Erosa would have been the better grappler. I would have liked to have seen things be mixed up for, for a longer period of time. I wanted to see this fight go in the later rounds. And it's just one of those things, man. The MMA game is crazy. Sometimes guys will just walk into shots. Sometimes you have money on guys. You think they're the better fighter. and You don't really get to see that fight play out. But you got to give props to Wu Choi. He went in there. He capitalized. He landed the shot. So props to, to Wu Choi. We'll take that one on the chin. Uh, Marlon Vera. You know, we were on him. A lot of people were on him to take out Davey Grant. We thought that he had evolved since the last time they fought. He showed that. Uh, this was my, my biggest play of the card here. Uh, Sergey Spivak to take out Alexio Linick. I thought that this was easy money. It didn't play out to be as easy as I thought it would be. But nevertheless, put a good amount of money back in my account. Brought money back in. Uh, it was a safe play. Because even when things didn't really go as smooth as they should have, you saw... The youth and you know the the strength of Sergey still w was enough to even to solidify a unanimous decision there. But uh, I I wanted him to hurt Olenek. I, I wanted him to get a finish there. I thought he should have. So it wasn't necessarily the best look for Sergey there. But a five unit play in Servac cash is there. Grabbed him right around minus two fifteen two twenty. Got a decent line on that too. And then the last fight we had the Korean Zombie. Like I said, I picked him to, to defeat Dan Ige. 
And uh, a lot of people gave me slack all over Instagram. Everybody was hating on me. The Korean zombie's a nasty striker. We saw him, I don't want to say dominate, but he was basically styling uh, on Yair Rodriguez on the feet, which not a lot of people do. Um, yes, he does make some mental errors in there at, at points in time, but you saw him. He was very cerebral this past weekend, handled business in, in a very smart way, controlled the fight, used some grappling too, showed some grappling skills. Keep an eye on the Korean zombie because he's he was ranked number four going into that fight. Now he says he's number three. You saw him on the mic. He was saying he's number three now. Very, very happy to see the Korean zombie get that victory there. As you guys know, I am a big fan of his, so I'm excited to see what's next for him. Uh, once we, we do a, a, a specific breakdown for the featherweight division, we'll be talking in detail a lot more about the Korean zombie and what's next for him and that whole division. That video will be coming out to you guys relatively soon here. Okay, so that's going to wrap up. It's going to wrap up UFC Vegas 29. We hit one of our three plays. So one, lost two. Wasn't my, my, wasn't my best card here. And we'll bounce back from that. Things have been a lot better as of recently. It's okay. Once in a while, you're going to take a little card like that. Uh, small plays, you know, no real damage done. And moving forward now, we're going to capitalize and definitely make it a very profitable card on UFC Vegas 30. So, of course, we got the big heavyweight main event bout to top the card off. I know we'll all be on the edge of our seats when that fight starts to take place, but let, let's let's look at some some fights throughout the card that maybe we want to put an asterisk next or, or fights that we're excited to see. I think there's some exciting ones here. Tim Means will now be facing Nicholas Dalby. Both of these guys had opponents that fell through in the last couple of weeks. I, I love that fight there. Uh, Hione Barcelos versus Timur Valiv. That's a fight taking place in the bantamweight division that it's a sleeper fight. Those are two of the most talented guys in the division. So if you didn't know that, I'm telling you now. And we're going to be talking about that more here in a minute. Uh, Shavkat Rachmanov, very excited to see him back in the cage. Um, you know, and just some some cool fights here. You know, Charles Rosa versus Justin James. These are fights that will play out to be exciting. So uh, that will take us to the first fight of the card. We got Yancey Maderos taking on Demir Hasnovic. Uh, Yancey Maderos on a three-fight losing streak, lost to Cerrone, lost to Gillespie, and lost to Lando Venata. Uh, you know, three well-known fighters in the division. Uh, you know, of course, Yancey, a guy that has put in a lot of work with the Diaz brothers and all those guys over there. You know, he's cut from that same cloth. A very tough fighter. Has good striking, good boxing. Has some jiu-jitsu skills as well, some underrated jiu-jitsu. He's been grinding for a long time, as tough as it comes. And, uh, and then you got Demir Hasnovic. The, the Bosnian bomber. This was a guy at one point in time, he was very hyped up. He was very hyped up. This was a guy a lot of people thought was going to be a big-time fighter in the division. He's definitely had some turbulence throughout his career since then. You know, losses to Alan Patrick. Uh, bounced back with a split over Nick Hine. Marco Polares, he did knock out. Then he loses to Christos Giagos, my boy. And then he loses to Hanato Moicano. And in the Moicano fight, he completely got exposed with his grappling. It was just... It's one thing to lose to Moicano. Moicano was a very talented fighter in the division, but it's the way he lost was absolutely just just played with in, in that fight, taken down and, and submitted early. So that was not a good look for him there. Hopefully he's working on his overall game there. And then um, uh, what else we got over here? Yeah, so he's coming off those two losses. He's going to be the minus 150 favorite here against a guy in Yancey that, that's like I said, man, a very talented and underrated fighter. Before his three losses in a row, he knocked out Eric Silva. And he also knocked out Alex Cowboy Oliveira. You know, Yancey is a guy that does have power in his hands. This is a guy that, that will be in your face and he'll be throwing heavy shots. He's going to put put a threat to you. You know, you're going to be in harm's way when you're fighting him. He's 33 years old. These guys, as far as the age goes, they're, they're pretty much on, that, on the same level there. As far as the experience goes too, not much of a difference. And uh, But y Yancey's going to have a five and a half reach advantage, which I do like for him, especially when he's using his boxing. If he if he does it the right way, stays on the outside and, and pumps the jab and throws some nice straights, I think he could definitely cause some damage to Demir here. Uh, Demir, on the other hand, is probably going to try to be a little light on his feet, trying to close the distance, trying to work in some takedowns and just try to make, make some scrambles happen and maybe try to get on top and, and do some work there. Maybe try to use some ground and pound. Um... This is a fight that I've been very back and forth on, okay? So if you guys catch my drift, I'm not crazy about the line as far as it goes for Demir. Because, you know, I'm back and forth on this fight. And meanwhile, we take a look at the live line. Demir's a minus 150 compared to Yancey's plus 125. 
I think that this fight, the line should be closer. I think that maybe you could you should see Demir right around a minus 130, 125. You know, with the comeback on Yancey, closer to even odds. Um, as much as I want to pick Yancey here, I, you know, I've been back and forth, like I said, man. I might even just take Yancey. I know Yancey's motivated for this fight, too. Um, yeah, but you know what? I'm going to take Yancey. I'm, I'm actually going to flip it up. You know, I, I was going to say, as I've been plotting on this fight here the last couple of days, I, I was going to edge Demir. I thought Demir might be a little bit more well-rounded fighter. But like I said, I've been so back and forth in this fight. With the value and everything, I'm going to roll with my boy Yancey here. Let's say Yancey stuffs those takedowns like he he's, he definitely could. I could see Yancey getting the better of the striking and just being more of a bully in there. It's an extremely close fight if you guys catch my drift. Value is on Yancey in my opinion. That's the way I'm going with that fight. And you know what? I'm going to take the, take the tough Hawaiian fighter, Yancey. How do you like that? Flipping it up on you guys the last second there. You thought I was going with Demir. I'm going to reverse it on you guys there. In the next fight, we got Charles, Boston Strong, Rosa taking on Justin, the Qatar hero, James. I don't know about that nickname there, man. The Qatar hero, not really crazy about that. Boston Strong. Do you remember Charles Rosa used to be the Boston Strangler? The UFC made him change that name. Of course, that being you know, a serial killer's nickname back in the day. I guess they didn't think it was the best marketing strategy, but Charles Rosa, you guys heard me talk about him quite, quite, quite often. This is a guy I bumped into at the bars down here in South Florida. I've talked with, um, you know, I don't know if he was drinking or not. Actually, I bumped into him on the St. Patrick's day. He was a really cool dude, uh, a real class act, man, an awesome guy. So I got nothing but love for him. Every time he steps in there, you know, whenever I meet some of these guys and you, you kind of judge their character off, you know, your meeting, meet you meeting them. Rosa was as as cool of a guy as could be. So just so you guys know that, uh, a talented fighter as well. I know he's actually a really good chef. I know he. I don't know if he's still doing that. He was a big chef over here in South Florida, working at some good restaurants. Uh, I have some some friends that that were working at one of the restaurants he was at a while back. Um, but Charles Rosa, good jujitsu. We've seen him go in there and really shine. You know, pulling off a submission armbar over Manny Bermudez. Who at the time Manny was subbing everybody left and right. Charles Rosa pulled off a nasty armbar against the cage too. He was up, squished up against the cage. Um, we saw him take out Kevin Aguilar in a tough fight, a split decision victory for him. Uh, other than that, though, you know he lost to Derek Minner. It's a guy you, that I'm high on. I believe is underrated. Uh, lost to Bryce Mitchell. That was a fight that he kind of got ragdolled in. But Bryce has been doing that to everybody. Uh, Justin James. Justin James is a guy. Three losses in a row. You know, he had that that big knockout over Frank Camacho. He took that fight on short notice. And, and ever since then, has just been having a tough time getting his hand raised. But has definitely had moments in there. You know, let, let's not just look at that three-fight losing streak and just say, oh, this guy can't, he can't fight in the UFC, this and that. No, Justin James has some power. He's definitely willing to engage in a slugfest. He's willing to put on an exciting fight. And, you know, I don't think it was a fluke the way he put out Camacho. I could definitely see him connecting on on certain guys in the division and putting them out. He throws heat. He throws heat from the hip. Uh, he's, a, he's a good wrestler. You know, he has a, a wrestling background. I believe he wrestled since he was a young guy, a young kid. And um, I know he's extremely hungry to get a victory here over Rosa. Uh, Rosa, a guy that's been working on his boxing too for some time, trying to get the striking, uh, you know, elevated a little bit to, to meet his grappling and whatnot, working on being a well-rounded fighter. Um, how about this guy here? Uh, this guy was saying Waggy. This is it's funny. I used to bump into this guy at the local gym in the sauna a lot and talk with him. Matt Waggy. He's had a fight over in PFL. So they're, they're around the way too. These guys are all grinded, man. Grinding and, and working on becoming better fighters. Um, you know, I like Rosa here. I, I slightly like Rosa, even though I do feel James is, is possibly live for, for a win here, even as a dog. I like Rosa's size in this fight. Rosa's going to be a little bit of the bigger fighter. Two-inch height advantage. Uh, but a one and a half reach advantage, but you know, good footwork. The striking, like I said, is coming around a little bit. I think he might be a little bit more technical. You know, it might be keeping his arms a little bit more uh, tucked in, keeping the elbows tucked in, throwing straighter punches. While James might be looping his hooks a little bit, and if he doesn't connect on them, I could see Rosa taking this fight here. Uh, Rosa, let's see the live line on Rosa right now. So Rosa right now is going to be. 
a minus 175 to minus 170 favorite right in that range. I think that's a little steep in my opinion. Like I said, I think James is, is live for a possible dog hit there. You might hear, you might see some dogs barking. But overall, I got Charles Rosa to win that fight. Uh, like I said, I think that Rosa can use the footwork, pump out the jab, and just you know be on his grind and actually have better cardio as well. In the later rounds, I think that Rosa will be the fresher fighter. You know, he, he's he's looked good in later rounds in his fights. Where Jane sometimes he he looks like he gets a little gas, but again, he's throwing heat. He's he's making these fights, uh, you know, he's turning these fights into brawl. So maybe that's also why you start to see him get a little tired in there as Jane's, you know, does start to breathe a little heavy sometimes in those later rounds. I like Rosa straight up. All right, moving over to the women's side of things in the bantamweight division. We got Jalija Storlienko taking on Julia Avila. Uh, Julia Avila coming off a tough loss against Sajara Eubanks. You guys remember she was a big favorite in that fight. Uh, was taken down. Ground and pounded a little bit, uh, worked on the feet a little bit. Just really wasn't the best look for her, especially coming in as a big favorite. And once again, she's coming in as a big favorite uh, because she's definitely had some flashes in there, right? Looked great against Gina Mazzani. She got an early knockout in that fight too. So be careful. Sometimes when these women go in there and get an early knockout over their opponents, their stock rises a little high. You don't see a lot of women doing that. Uh, the victory over Panny Kianzads is a solid victory. Panny's definitely looking very good as of recently. Uh, knocked out Alexa Connors, a recognizable name. Uh, finished, you know, Ashley Dean. You know, this, so again, this is a girl that does get finishes in there. She throws nasty knees in the clinch. She she really does good work in the clinch. That's one thing I like about her her game, and does have power in her hands. Although I'm not crazy about the technique as far as the striking goes at all. She's very stiff and robotic. She, she throws from weird angles. Um, you know, on the other hand, uh, you know, St Sterlienko. This is a girl. You know, the Lith Lithuanian fighter. A very traditional martial artist. I know she has a background in a couple different, uh, you know, classic martial arts. You know, she has some good skills. Uh, you know, now at this point in time, she has what fourteen professional fights. She took that UFC fight or UFC debut against Yana Kunitskaya, who is a a very talented fighter. In that fight, she started off good. She looked decent in the first round, but Yana definitely took over that fight. Right? If you guys remember in the later rounds, Yana was was really bullying her against the cage, and just she looked good in that fight, Yana. Um, so one thing to keep in the, take into consideration too, uh, you know, Stoly Stolyarenko, she, uh, her last fight, she fainted at the weigh-ins, right? She fainted. It was actually a pretty nasty scene, man. They had to grab her I mean, she was, she collapsed at, at the scale and basically her, her reasoning for it was that she made weight so early that, you know, she was stuck waiting to, to uh, go on the scales for quite some time when she already hit weight and she was just she she didn't time it out properly you know she needed to be rehydrating herself at that point in time and getting uh, you know herself back to normal and she wasn't able to do that because she had to wait for her to be called up there um these girls are going to be identical as far as the height and reach go uh, you know uh, avila is going to be 33 so she's going to be about five years older going into this fight i do think avila is going to be extremely motivated after losing that last fight and uh, that that's why i'm gonna i'm gonna take her to win the fight here uh, but again, I was not impressed from what I saw from her against Sarge there. She came in as a big favorite in that fight. You guys taking her now as a big favorite once again after that performance? You know, I, I don't know about all that, man. I do not know about all that. And especially when, when uh, Storlienko is a girl that is skilled. We, we saw flashes from her, even in her, her UFC debut in the first round. She had some moments. You could tell she knows how to fight. This isn't some girl that just doesn't know what she's doing in there and you know, is a, is a decent looking girl and she's getting her opportunity. No, this is a real, you know, this is a real martial artist. She can fight. So yeah, I'm not really crazy about the line. And yeah, I'm going to take Avila to win the fight. But again, I think that that line may be off. I don't trust these types of fights sometimes like this, man. I'm warning you guys. Um, we've seen, seen this time and time again, where these girls come in as big favorites and they just don't even, they don't perform to the level of what their line is. Even if they win, they, they sneak by sometimes. But I like Avila overall. Let's see if Avila can work some ground and pound or really do damage in the clinch with the knees and throw those power shots early and maybe not maybe not even so much early, maybe even later in the rounds too. If she's if she's still in there fresh, she can throw some damage and really hurt uh, Jolja, Jolja uh, Stor, Stor, Storyanko. I know those names, man. These names get me sometimes. Uh, but uh, Avila, this is a girl that does have power again, so keep an eye on that, that power. 
And, you know, maybe she looks good in the later rounds as well, either early or later. So there's a couple different factors going on there. So in the next fight, this fight, man, I don't know if these guys are UFC caliber, but they do deliver exciting fights based on the fact they're either getting knocked out or they're knocking somebody out. Uh, most of the time they're getting knocked out, but Marcin Pracnio taking on Ike Villanueva. Uh, you know, Marcin is coming off a victory against Khalil Roundtree, which, which was pretty surprising. He was a pretty big underdog in there. He was able to drag that fight to the deep waters, use the grappling and, and drown Khalil there. He, he survived the early onslaught. So it was good to see him get a victory because if he didn't get that victory, he was done for. Now look at him. He's getting an opportunity against Ike Villanueva. He's coming in as a 220 favorite. Ike Villanueva... Uh, you know, what is he? He's won one of his last three fights in the UFC. Lost to Chase Sherman, got knocked out early. Lost to Jordan Wright, which, if you remember, you know that's the uh, the Beverly Hills Ninja who knocked him out. Here's Chase Sherman knocking him out as well. That was a, a nice look for Sherman, who has not really looked that good besides that fight either. So, kind of shows you, uh, Ike. You know, I don't. I just don't know if he's on that level, that UFC caliber level. And then uh, he did bounce back with the victory over Vinicius Mojera the talented jiu-jitsu fighter who's came over to MMA who's been getting knocked out inside the octagon time and time and again. So maybe don't put too much stock into that. Villanueva is going to be a plus 175. I think that's reasonable. If you want to take a shot on the dog here, I wouldn't hold you to the fire for that just based on the fact that Marcin is just not that talented, not that good of, of a fighter either. He's sloppy on the feet. He's super susceptible to being finished. We've seen him get knocked out by Sam Alvey. Uh, Magomed and Kalaya finished him, and uh, Mike Rodriguez finished him. So that was three losses in a row there for him. He's 32 years old. He's six foot three with the 74 inch reach. Uh, the reach is he's gonna have a one inch reach advantage over Il Villanueva. I think that this is gonna be a sloppy fight. I think you can expect the unexpected in this fight. I think you can expect something entertaining one way or another. That's kind of how I feel about that. I think that we could easily see a knockout here or some type of damage being done. Um. I'll take Marcin to win this fight. And, I, and I'll say that with a grin because it's Marcin Pracnio and picking him to win a fight, you know, it's, it's nothing to be too confident in. But uh, look at them. Look at them breaking the, the, the concrete bricks right here. <laughs> Marcin, man. Believe in yourself. You are stronger than you think. All right. So he's, he's got some confidence going in the, into this fight. Let's see if he can maybe rain some nasty elbows like that. But uh, usually when you see this type of stuff, it's not a good look. Uh, I don't know. I'm not crazy about those types of things. You know, you see them on Instagram, right? These guys doing these little uh, brick breaking and wood breaking type of stuff. And all that really is, is a bunch of malarkey. Shout out to Jamie Malarkey. Um, but yeah, I'll take Marcin to win the fight. I am very excited for this next fight taking place in the welterweight division. Shavkat Rachmanov is now taking on Michelle Prazeris. Michelle Prazeris is a guy that, uh, you know, Michelle Prezeris is a guy that's been around the block for a long time, man. Michelle Chater Prezeris, the very undersized uh, fighter, you know, for the most part, but continuously delivers or is continuously delivered throughout his career. But when I say undersized, I do understand that he is stout and built like a, like a tank, but he's he's short, man. He's five foot six. He's going to be taking on Shavkat, who's six foot one. There's going to be a 10 inch reach advantage for Shavkat. And the, the Nomad is a guy, you know, burst on the scene to the UFC, submits Charles, uh, uh, excuse me, Alex Oliveira, Alex Cowboy Oliveira in the first round, pulled off that guillotine in just in beautiful fashion. Uh, this is a guy that just continues to finish his opponents. You take a look at his resume real quick, 13-0, uh, just finishing guys left and right, man, over an M1, Battle of the Nomads, just, just finishing all these guys. Um I believe he's finished every single one of his professional fights except for one. Uh, taking out guys like John Young Park. It's a recognizable name. But, uh, you know, do, do consider that a lot of the guys that he's fighting, even though they don't have the biggest of names in that part of the world over there, Battle of the Nomads and, you know, M1. Of course, some of you guys are familiar with M1, but I'm sure a lot of you aren't. There's are some talented fighters over there. Don't think just because you don't recognize the names that these guys aren't legit, uh, you know, the, some of these guys are decent fighters if you really, really look into it and pry. Um, and you saw that. He came over and submitted Alex Oliveira in the first round. Not a lot of people go out there and do that. So I am a believer in this guy. There's certain guys that for whatever reason, they, they have that X factor, and I believe this guy has it. 
I have this feeling, man. I have this gut feeling. He needs to prove a lot more to me. He's only 26 years old, uh, born in Uzbekistan, fighting out of Kazakhstan right now. Uh, these guys, this part of the world, man, really breed some some tough, tough dudes. As far as I'm concerned, you got to love just his whole image, man, coming out with the uh, with that hat. I forget. I don't know the exact specifics. I forgot exactly what that is on his head. I doubt it's a raccoon. I was going to go at raccoon, but it's something else. But he's one of those those real nomad type of guys, man. I, I believe this guy's out there hunting with the eagle on his shoulder out in the valleys. And, uh, you know, this is a guy that probably has, you know, direct lineage to, uh, you know, Genghis Khan and all that. So I admire that type of stuff as a guy that's big into to ancient war and all that. This guy just has that, that, that vibe to him, man. But he has to prove a lot more. And if you want to prove something to me, you go out there and you take out a guy in Prozeris. Because Prozeris... Like we said, man, I talked about him a little bit earlier. This is a guy that doesn't lose a lot. 26-3 and three as a professional. Uh, took out Bartos Fabinski. Submitted him with his own guillotine. Uh, took out Zach Cummings, a very tough fighter, who was also much bigger than him. Or bigger than him, you know, but that different type of size. Uh, and, and that fight wasn't an issue for, for Prezeris there. Took out Des Green. Mads Burnell. And then, uh, you know, he did lose in his last fight to Ismail Nerdyov, who, you know, the Aust Austrian wonder boy. That was a fight that Prezeris was a big favorite and he dropped the ball there. It's been a while now. That was two two years and three months ago. Well, Shavkat fought seven months ago, about eight months ago, uh, right right around there. So uh, Shavkat was in there more recently. I like the youth of Shavkat. He's 26 compared to Prezeris' 39. I love that 10-inch reach advantage. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. I like Shavkat to show up and, and to, to show out. This guy's going to get another big victory here. At the very least, even if he doesn't get the finish, I think he'll really showcase some of his skills and the talents that he brings into the octagon. And this is a little bit of a changing of a guard type of fight. Uh, I've been a big fan of Prezeris's throughout the years. Uh, but, you know, I think that he's going to have to start to settle down. And after this loss, maybe he, you know, creeping up to his 40s, maybe he starts to slow things down. You know, that's yet to be seen. We'll see what's to come from him in the near future. But he's giving it another shot here. It's been a while. He's stepping back in there. And he's going to try to represent the country of Brazil. And uh, he's a solid dude, man. This guy's a solid dude, man. Built like a, a brick house. But I, I got Shavkat to win that, win that fight. And to remain undefeated. And he'll be 14-0 and 0 after that fight. All right, this fight here taking place in the bantamweight division. Hayoni Barcelos taking on Tamor Valiv. Two of the most talented guys in the division, whether you guys are familiar with them at this point yet or not, I'm telling you right now, these guys are two of the most talented fighters in the division. Hayoni Barcelo, 16-1, and one, a nasty, nasty striker, a sick jiu-jitsu practitioner when he's in the MMA uh, world as well, man. The way he transitions on the mat, his MMA grappling game is disgusting. He'll snatch your back up in a heartbeat. He'll put you in a rear naked choke. He'll work ground and pound. He's so fluid with with his his scrambling ability, his scrambling ability, and going from one transition to the to the other, man. Whether he's throwing a head kick on you, and all of a sudden he's in on your hips and he's on your back. This guy is so fluid and so quick with it. I've been extremely extremely high on Barcelos. He's put some money in my pocket throughout the years, and I'm a fan of his. Tamor Valiv, this is a guy I've been following him for a long time as well. You know, there's a YouTube channel. I forget the name, but I, I came across it a while back. They show up, showcase a lot of these talented Dagestani fighters. So Moore is one of those guys. You know, if you if you understand that, this is one of the guys that's been coming out of Dagestan or has been hyped up coming out of Dagestan for some time. Seventeen and two. Now it says here uh, it has the uh, was this no decision or whatever it was. It was overturned. That's not a draw. There he was knocked out in that fight against Trevin Jones, uh, the the Trinidadian fighter, I believe, who has nasty powers, been knocking dudes out, but he failed a drug test, and I believe it was for something stupid like pot or something like that back then. So that was a knockout loss. But understand that Tamor was dominating that fight, dominating. But he was relentless. He never took his foot off the gas pedal, and he put himself in a position where he got clipped and he got dropped down to the, to the floor and got you know he got rained on with some ground and pound. And he lost that fight. He is extremely talented, though. He can grapple. He has that Dagestani Sambo type of wrestling. Has some power in his hands. He's relentless. But on the other hand, man, like I said, man, Hayoni is just nasty. These guys are going to have identical reaches. Only a one-inch height advantage for Hayoni. So these guys are very similar in stature. This is such a good fight here, man. This is such a great test for both these guys. We're really going to see where, where they stand when this fight's said and done. 
Um, I like Hayoni here. I just, I've liked what I've seen from him a little bit more so. I haven't seen those mental errors inside the octagon like we saw from, from Tamor when he got finished. Um, so, you know, I do think that Tamor is an absolute beast as well. You know, took out Martin Day in that last fight, controlled him, you know, took him down, did a, did a bunch of stuff there. He's 31 years old. He's probably right about in his prime at this point in time. Right, right about there. You know, 19 professional fights. Now is the time for Tamor. If he wants to make a splash in the UFC, he needs to take out Barcelos. Barcelos is no joke. You want to prove that you're one of the nastiest fighters in the division on planet Earth. Here's your chance right here. The winner of this, their stock is going to be very high. And I expect a big, big fight for them after after this fight. You know, the winner moving forward, I expect a big fight. I like Hayoni Barcelos. He's right around a minus 230 right now. We'll take a look at the live line. It's going up to about 250. Uh, I understand it. I understand it. I think he'll have the edge as far as the striking, the jujitsu game. Maybe Timur has a little bit of an edge with the wrestling, but I don't even know about that. I think that even if he tries to to control him and take him down, I could see Barcelos re reversing him and just being the superior overall grappler. I like Barcelos to win the fight. Take a note. Take take note of this fight, man. You want to see a high caliber match in the division? Here it is, right right here, man. Ioni Barcelos taking on Timur Valiv. Taking place in the lightweight division. Hanato Moicano taking on Jai Herbert. And this guy, Jai, the black country banger. This guy is one of the more highly touted prospects coming over for, from the UK scene, fighting out of England. Uh, you know, he made his UFC debut against Francisco Trinaldo. And that was a fight. He was the, I believe he was the favorite. Yes, he was. He was the favorite going into that fight. And uh, he, he ended up losing that fight. It was a very entertaining fight. If you guys remember, a lot of back and forth. Herbert definitely had some moments in that fight where he was he hurt Trinaldo. Uh, you know, in my opinion, that was probably Trinaldo's best fight, best fight of his career. Just showing, you know, his will, you know, being hurt at point in times in that fight, but just, you know, staying in there and fighting to the last second of that fight where he eventually got that finish. He showed his experience in there. Uh, but Herbert, like I said, he had some moments. Herbert is definitely a talented striker. This guy has some very, very clean and crisp boxing. That's what you got to keep an eye on. This guy is, I believe his background really is boxing. He has some nasty hands. He's super technical in there. Uh, you know, he's continuously working on his overall game. Uh, he's coming into this fight as a two-to-one underdog, which is understandable because you got a guy in Hanato Moicano uh, who, although has only won two of his last five fights, has been in there with some of the best of them. You know, submitted Cub Swanson. Lost to Jose Aldo, got finished early there. Lost to the Korean Zombie. Again, you guys forget about the Korean Zombie, man. Uh, took out Demir Hasnovic. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Made easy work of him on the ground. And then in his last fight, he lost to Rafael Fazeev, who's one of the nastiest strikers in the in the division, which you guys know if you, if you saw my lightweight uh, divisional breakdown, we talked about him a little bit, one of the nastiest strikers in the game. So, you know, he he, he definitely dropped the ball there. He's looking to bounce back. This is a great opportunity for him. I think that Moicano can can really use his grappling and his overall MMA game to uh, to pull off the victory here. I think that he definitely has to mix things up. You know that he's get, always getting in great work over at American Top Team, always brushing shoulders with some of the best fighters in the world. He can, without a doubt, strike as well. He's a nasty striker. But as of recently, I don't know if it's, if it's maybe damage has accumulated in some of the wars he's been in, but... It seems that he does freeze up at times and, and gets hurt a little bit in there. And I wouldn't be shocked if if this guy Herbert can can land, you know, a solid punch on him and hurt him. We've seen Moicano drop the ball in those circumstances. I don't know if Herbert's on the level of the guys that that did that to him though. You know, th that remains to be seen. We're going to see how that plays out. I think Hanato is the better overall fighter. I like the grappling edge. That's that's the X factor. I like the the jiu-jitsu game and the underrated grappling of Hanato. I think Konato really needs to to focus on getting a takedown and working his jiu-jitsu. Um, you know, Hanato is going to have a five-inch reach disadvantage. He's going to be the, the shorter guy as well. I think Herbert can definitely give him some problems on the feet. I think Moicano can hold his own on the feet. We'll see how that plays out. But he's definitely going to be in harm's way if he wants to sit there and strike for, for three rounds. I want to see Moicano mix it up, use the grappling. And I think that he should prevail. He's a minus 250 favorite. Maybe that's a little bit high in my opinion. Just based on on how he has looked as of recently, just dropping the ball in some spots. But again, against high level of competition, there's some X factors here. But I got to go with the uh, the
the more seasoned UFC fighter in Hanato Moikano who has the better overall game in my in my uh my estimates. We'll see how it plays out. Uh it's gonna be a tough fight. And it, it could be a very exciting fight. All right. So going to the next fight. Tim Means and Nicholas Dalby both had fights that fell through in the last couple of weeks. You know, especially the Tim Means fight. I was very disappointed. I really wanted to see Tim Means uh, get in there. Was it last weekend? But again, uh, you know, maybe it worked out for the best, I guess, because Nicholas Dalby's a guy that definitely brings the fight. And I think this might even be a better matchup than uh, what his last fight was supposed to be. And uh, yeah, Tim Means was supposed to be fighting uh, Danny Roberts. So yeah, actually, maybe I take that back, actually. The, you know, the Danny Roberts fight. Danny Roberts is a very exciting fighter that, that loves to engage in a brawl, uh, spectacular striker. Maybe that was the better fighter, but Nicholas Dalby brings it as well. So you guys get my point there. Dalby will show up to, to put on a show. Uh, Dalby, an explosive athlete. This guy, you know, very muscular, very explosive. Uh, we see him maybe slow down a little bit at times in some of these fights. You know, he's, he's exploding. And then all of a sudden you see him make some mental errors. You'll see him get, get dropped. You'll see him get hurt. Um, the Jesse Ronson fight, he lost that fight. That was also overturned. Jesse, the body snatcher Ronson, was on performance enhancing drugs. So take that for what it was. You know, he was a big favorite going to that fight, but he was finished in that fight. But uh, Ronson was on legit performance enhancing drugs, if you guys remember. Bounced back with the victory over Daniel Rodriguez. That was one of my official plays, and I got him at dog odds. So uh, I love that hit that I hit there. He was like a plus, I forget exactly, plus 130, 140. Uh, pull it up real quick, actually. Yeah, Dalby going into that fight. Yeah, he was a two to one dog. You know, that was, a, I really capitalized there. So you, you see my relationship with Dalby, man. I, I've had faith in him in the past. He's an explosive fighter. Uh, at one point in time, he was really, really touted as a prospect. But again, I do believe he makes mental errors and he's there to be hurt. Tim Means, one of the most fluid strikers in the game, one of the most underrated fighters. He's another guy, though, that makes mental errors. He'll be looking spectacular in his fights, and then he'll drop the ball, and he will be finished himself. You know, we saw that. We saw that as of recently. We saw, you know, uh, Nico Price clipped him with the hook as he was coming in, and, and Tim Means was dominating that fight. Dropped the ball against Daniel Rodriguez, stuck his neck in there, got subbed. So we see those mental errors at times, at times with Tim Means, and it's a shame because if he didn't have those couple little a little slip slip-ups, he would really be pushing his way to the top of the division. He's 37. The time is now. He's got to string off a couple big victories and just to see him get a big name fight. You know, maybe he gets a big spot on the main card, uh, you know, on a big, a big event. And uh, I would love to see that. You guys heard me break down his fight against Danny Roberts recently. I'm a big fan of Tim Means. You guys know that. I like Tim Means to win this fight. I think he'll be the more fluid striker. I think his cardio is better. Uh, I think he's well-rounded enough to, to go to the mat with him or stuff the takedowns, do clinch work, to do all that stuff. He'll be the more fluid striker. I expect him to be fresher in the later rounds. And bearing he doesn't get clipped with a nasty shot from Dalby and make and, you know make that that error that mistake in there and get finished. I think Tim Means takes care of business, and uh, you know he'll be the taller fighter. Reaches about the same. Uh, you know Dalby very active, jumping and moving around. You know on his toes, but I think Tim Means will be plotting forward and working the head movement and slipping and ripping. And Tim Means right now is. Right around a minus 170 favorite. That That's reasonable, man. Tim Means comes into his fights for the most part as a favorite. Because uh, like I said, he might make that mental error. But as far as skill for skill, there's not a lot of guys that, that do it like Tim. And Tim is a legit dude. He's a good guy. He's been uh, working with the wrestling, his high school, local high school wrestling team, putting in a lot of work with them. Tim Means is legit. This guy's a good dude, man. This guy did a stint in prison. You know, he's changed his life around. And uh, Dalby, on the other hand, is just a... You know, a real athlete and a guy that's that's focused. So we'll see, man. This is an exciting fight. I like Tim Means to win that fight. In the next fight, Andre Touchy Feely taking on Daniel Pineda. Daniel Pineda, man, is coming off a big loss. If you guys remember, he was really, really putting things together over in Bellator. And uh, where else was he fighting? Uh, PFL, excuse me. Yep. Yeah, well, he fought in Bellator for a while, came over to the PFL scene, was destroying dudes. You see these these 
these these overturned victories. These were all victories. And I believe some of these were all in one night. He was out there finishing dudes. He was in some type of tournament. Took out Jeremy Kennedy, a very tough fighter. Um, you know, took out Herbert Burns and his UFC debut. This guy, you know, the only issue was, you know, he, these were overturned because he was taking some type of performance-enhancing drug. But then he comes in, still looks good against Herbert. Uh, so, you know, you got to think, okay, maybe... The performance enhancing drugs weren't really why he was looking good. This guy's really just on his grind. Then he he gets knocked out by Cub Swanson. Looks a little stale in there. Looks a little a little flat in his feet. Uh, but maybe it was just because he got clipped and he was a little bit out of the fight. Daniel Pineda, 35 years old. He's a very well-rounded fighter. Uh, like I said, disappointed in his last loss. I was on him to win that fight against Cub. And uh, Cub showed again that he's still hanging on. He's still a tough fighter. This is an excellent fight for him against Andre Feely. Stylistically, this has all the makings to be a barn burner, one of the best fights of the night. These guys are going to throw down. You know, anytime Feely's in there, he's throwing down. And, uh, you know, the longtime Team Alpha Male product, only 31 years old, even with all that experience, almost 30 professional fights at this point. Uh, Feely's fights, even when he loses, man, they're, they're close for the most part. Uh, the Sadiq Yusuf fight was a close one. He's had some close victories as well. Uh, the Charles Jordan fight. Um, He's a, he's a good good fighter, man. He's a good striker, but he, he is well-rounded. He has the grappling. He's, he's underrated, his grappling. But we have seen him taken down at times and controlled a little bit in the guard. Not sure if Pineda's, Pineda's going to try to go to go that route. I kind of foresee this fight being more of a striking affair and whoever's going to get the better of the striking. Maybe Pineda tries to mix it up, though, a little bit. Maybe sneak in a takedown or two. Um, yeah, man, this is a good fight here. Um, you know, here's the thing. I'm not... I'm not really in agreement with this plus 130 line on Pineda. Pineda right now plus 190. Um, I think that's a pretty steep line for a guy that can definitely show up and, and handle business. We've seen from seen it from him as of recently. Uh, I'm sure that loss has really motivated him, and he's going to be looking, you know, to, he's going to be looking to hurt Feely in there. Um, so I think the line is off. I do want to see how Pineda looks going into this fight. I really, I want to see him throughout the fight week. Uh, you know, see how he looks at the weigh-ins and whatnot. Is he going to be in great shape for this fight? Is he going to look a little flat, a little flabby, man? Like, what's going on with this guy and, and the failed drug test? There's definitely something going on with all that. Um, yeah, man, I'm kind of on the fence. I almost want to kind of bark bark on the dog right now and take Pineda on this fight. Uh, Feely coming off that Bryce Mitchell loss where he was taken down and controlled a little bit. Um... Yeah, I'm going to take the dog here. I'm going to take Pineda to win the fight. I am going to take Pineda. It's a close fight. Feely could definitely show up. Feely might even hurt him on the feet. Maybe Pineda looks flat-footed again and, and gets hurt out there. I'm going to take Pineda, though. I'm going to take the dog here. I think that he has some some possibilities for a victory. He could hold his own on the feet and maybe use use a couple takedowns to, uh, to steal a round or two and pull off a decision. We'll see how that fight goes. All right, we got Danilo Marquez, the jiu-jitsu fighter, taking on Kennedy and Chuku and Chuku. The uh, I believe he's Nigerian. Yep, Nigerian now fighting over in Texas. Uh, he's been getting at work with Fortis MMA. This guy has a nasty reach, an 83-inch reach. Uh, he's gonna have what almost a six-inch reach, but a five and a half reach advantage, which is nothing new for him when he steps in there. I, I say it time and time again. He reminds me a lot of of a basketball player that's fighting MMA. Uh, you know, he has that kind of look in there. You know, he's six foot five. You know, he's he's very, you know, he stands very upright though, but he could pump the jab out there. He has, like I said, he has that nasty reach. He's very rangy in there. Um, you know, he had that one loss to Paul Craig where he was submitted, but you guys are starting to realize that my boy Paul Craig is legit. Had a very tough fight with Darko Stoshik. That was a, a kind of a grindy affair, uh, but he looked good because he, he showed that in the later rounds, he could he could push. He could push with his cardio. He's a tough guy, man. He doesn't just fade and give up in those fights. So that was a good look for him. And then we saw that again in the Carlos Olberg fight. He was hurt early. Remember that guy, Carlos Olberg, who's one of the top guys, you know, coming from down under. You know, he trains out of uh, city kickboxing with, with Izzy and all those guys. And Olberg was a big favorite. And Kennedy ate a bunch of shots. Kennedy has a nasty, nasty chin. A uh, nasty chin. You could hit this guy right in the face, man, with the, a, a solid bat. Crack him right in the, in the side of his face. This guy is not going out. I'm telling you. He has a nasty chin. Some of the shots I've seen him take, I do not think Danilo has any realistic shot about of knocking him out. Danilo's 
route to victory here is going to be takedowns, 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 working the jujitsu game. Hopefully can try to fade him and keep getting in on those hips and the, and the legs and, and try to smother him there. That's how I see this fight going. Other, other than that, I can see Kennedy hurting him, just pushing the pace and just making this a brawl and just continuously marching forward, trying to inflict damage on Danilo. Was not impressed with any of Danilo's striking. And, uh, you know, he, he did get two victories since, you know, joining the UFC, but took out Cadiz uh, Ibrahimov, which is not saying much at all. And uh, Mike Rodriguez, that was a good look for him. Mike Rodriguez pretty much dropped the ball there, so he needs to do something very similar that, to, to what he did in that fight here. He needs to get takedowns and work the jujitsu game because his jujitsu is there. This guy, he definitely he's a, he's a long time jujitsu player, and, and he could do something there. That's going to be his route uh, to victory if he wants to have his hand ra raised like it did uh, get raised here. Um, I like Kennedy though. I think Kennedy looks to be in good shape for this fight, and I think that. If he could just stuff those takedowns, he should be able to handle business. So I like Kennedy and Chukwu. How you guys like my, my African uh, pronunciations of the last names? I know I've been getting some hate for some of my, my Russian pronunciations, but I got the African pronunciations down packed. Kennedy and Chukwu. I, don't know, I think I said that pretty good. All right. That takes us to the co-main event. Ovens St. Prue taking on Tanner Bozer. Tanner getting another fight here, man. This guy... Lost two fights in a row. Lost to Andre Arlovsky. Lost to Elir Latifi two weeks ago. And he's he's motivated. He wants to get right back in there. From what I heard, he, he was all over the UFC brass, begging to get right back in there for a fight. This guy is always in the gym. I've talked to him quite a bit on Instagram. Was trying to get an interview with him for, for a long time. Uh, at least he was nice enough to, to consistently uh, you know, reach back out to me. And we, we went back and forth. But he just basically admitted that his training regimen is just too much man he can't even do interviews or it would have to be a very specific time we never made that happen but tanner don't get it twisted tanner is on his grind this guy is really really wants to, to clean things up he needs to get a victory here he lost two in a row if he loses that third fight it will not be a good look um you know tanner was looking good for a while had those two knockout victories over rafael pessoa and Felipe felipe Linz. Uh, before that he went to a decision with cyril gain which was a good look because Cyril Gaines been just dominating everybody and he actually hung in there and took that fight on short notice. But OSP, man, let me put it to you guys like this. OSP is a guy that has came through for me at dog odds, you know, before, you know, um, took him to take out Alonzo Menafield, got the knockout there. Uh, OSP pulls off crafty submissions. Uh, you guys know about the, uh, the OSP choke, uh, used to be called Devon flu. Now it's called the OSP choke. Um, OSP is a former call it, uh, collegiate linebacker. He's an athlete. He, he can do it all. You know, he is coming off a loss against Jamal Hill, uh, but it is what it is. He, it's, he lives to see another day in there, and now he's taking on Tanner Bozer. Tanner Bozer has been hesitant at times in there and just hasn't looked as good as of recently, and I'm taking the dog here. I'm taking Ovin St. Prue to win the fight. Uh, oh, like I said, Ovin St. Prue is a guy that's delivered for me at dog odds, where Tanner Bozer is a guy that's cost me money before. You know, he cost me a little bit of money uh, with that uh, that Andre Arlovsky loss, and that was a fight that he just didn't put his foot on the gas, and he, he blew the fight. That was his fight to win. Uh, so I'm not really too worried about him having the youth advantage or, or you know, as far as the the height and reach, that's definitely OSP's advantage, and that have a four-and-a-half-inch reach advantage. I like the the tough OSP who can consistently steps in there like a gladiator and looks to go to war. So, you know, I'm on OSP here. Yeah, I could easily see this... You know, not going good for him. Maybe Tanner steps it up and brings the fight and connects on him. But, you know, like I said, man, Tanner just has not been looking good as of recently. You see the 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 recent loss here to Latifi. Latifi came in as a dog and took him out. I don't see why OSP can't do the same thing. So that's going to be my pick. It is Ovince St. Prue, Sapase, Naboule. Shout out to all my Haitians out there. All right, we reached the main event. Like I said, man, this is what this, this fight card is really all about. I'm super excited for this fight here. Two of the most dangerous guys in the division. You guys, please like this video for your boy. Hit subscribe. Your guys' support really, really carries a lot of weight for me, man. It helps me uh, continue to grow here. I'm, and, and catch me on Instagram too, man. I'm trying to hit that 10,000 mark. Help me get to that 10,000 mark with the subscribers. Come on, guys. Help me out over here. Hit that button. 
Uh, I try to put in a lot of time breaking down this taping and giving you this, this free content out here. So if you guys could do that for me, I would really, really appreciate it. Now, like I said, man, this main event is, is an awesome fight. Cyril Gain, undefeated 8-0. This guy has a lot of experience as a striker. Since came over to the MMA world, has, has been flawless, 8-0. He's a freak athlete. You do not see guys six foot four with an 83 inch reach move the way that he does. He's super light on his feet. You see him working on his ground game as well. He's pulling off submissions in there, uh, pulling off heel hooks against Dante Mays. Um, you know, like I said, he took out Tanner Boser, knocked out Junior Dos Santos, and uh, styled on Jarzino Rosenstruck. Just Jarzino, Jarzino had nothing for him in there. I know that wasn't the most eventful fight, but that was an easy W for Cyril. Alexander Volkov, on the other hand, a nasty, nasty striker as well. A big boy. This guy looks like one of the towers, one of the twin towers over here. Um, this guy is no joke. And you put him and in, in, uh, Stefan Struve side by side, it looks like the twin towers, these guys. Um, but if, if there's a hole in Volkov's game, it's definitely his grappling. We've seen him taken down and controlled, uh, in particularly the, uh, the Curtis Blades fight. He blew that fight by not being able to stuff the takedown. Otherwise, he wins that fight if he can keep it on the feet. Um, I've been watching Volkov fight from his Bellator days. He's really, really evolved as a fighter. Let's not forget he was styling on Derek Lewis, breaking records in the division for strikes landed before he got knocked out at that last second. Um, uh, it was a crazy fight. I was in Vegas for that fight. Um, Volkov is the real deal. Okay. So I want to make that, that clear first and foremost. And, uh, you know, he got rid of that stingray. Remember he had that stingray tattoo? Covered it up with some sick samurai. It's a pretty dope tattoo. But um, Boone Gaiman, this guy, like I said, too fluid on the feet. Just showing evolution and his grappling to go along with the striking. The, the movement is just, it's there. I could see Cyril Gain possibly getting some takedowns and, and get, once again exposing Volkov's takedown defense and grappling abilities. I do know that Volkov will be a dog in there though and, and continuously try to work his way back up. This is a 25-minute fight. This fight probably won't play out easily for Gain, but I like Gain to win the fight. You got to be on Gain here. Um, I, I do believe that he's a minus 170 favorite. Uh, whether or not you see value there, that, that's what you got to make the decision on because Volkov, Drago, you know, Alexander Drago, Volkov will make this a fight and striking is his bread and butter. So, you know, he has that reach as well. 81 inch reach. He's a big boy, six foot seven. He has some nasty kicks, but I think Gain's footwork will be better. I could see him mixing in a takedown or two to go along with slightly better striking and working some knees in the clinch, just in and out, working working better in this fight. And that's why I like Cyril Gain. And Cyril Gain is a guy, I think we all know what's to come. This is a guy that will eventually be fighting for the belt. I think there's no question about it. And you think about those intriguing matchups with him against guys like Stipe or Francis Ngannou. Um, you know, there's some really exciting fights out there. I'm very, very high on Cyril Gain. You guys know there's certain fighters that I, I tell you guys, this is one of those guys. Cyril Gain is a guy. Keep an eye on him. This guy could put a lot of money in your pockets. In your pockets, all right. So, um, I like Cyril Gain to win this fight, but just keep in mind, Volkov is no joke, and stylistically, this should be a very good fight. All right, guys. So that's gonna wrap up UFC Vegas 30. Another, another fight card. Another fight card comes out to us. You know, another Saturday, another night of fights. Um, I'll be doing some Instagram live videos uh, here throughout the week or towards the end of the weekend. I'm going to start get on, getting on there more often. Um, so if you guys want, you know, catch me on Instagram and you guys can, you know, come comment if you have any questions for me or whatnot. I uh, appreciate all the love and the support. You guys all have an amazing rest of your weekend. Stay positive. Uh, if you guys are, are working your way towards a goal or you guys, you know, all you young bucks out there, you, you are aspiring to be something great. Always remember, you guys could do whatever you guys want to do. Don't let anybody put any type of doubt in your mind. That's the message to uh, to cap off this, this fight prediction video. And uh, again, I appreciate all your guys' support. Please hit that like button. Subscribe. Catch me on my social media. Signing out. The MMA Fortune Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller.